Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this pistol that you see in my hands and that you guys saw me shooting throughout the intro. This is the Beretta. This is 92X and then it's customized by the folks over at Langdon Tactical. So there's a lot sort of going into that. The 92X is the newest series of guns uh, from Beretta. Basically they use a Vertex slide and what they call an M9A3 inspired slide. We'll get into what that means here in just a second. And uh, they're a little bit more modular, so they have different grip sizes. Again, we'll touch on that here in just a second. They have sights that you can swap out. They also come in railed and non-railed versions. And then this one has been souped up by the folks over at Langdon Tactical. Langdon Tactical offers two different versions of sort of enhancements to the 92X series of guns. They offer this one, which is a full uh, mp3 coating of all parts with the exception of the slide uh, the barrel and the frame so any other metal part inside of there gets mp3 coated that does include three magazines so that is nice slicks everything up and then of course Langdon Tactical does their trigger job on it which is fantastic and very well known at this point in the industry. So that's one option that they offer. That's the one obviously that we went with. And then they offer just the trigger job upgrade um, and you can just get it just like that. So uh, the 92 X's come in several different sizes. This is the full size. This of course is also the decocker only. Um, it also comes in a Centurion and a compact size. All of them are offered from Lane and Tactical with the customization that we just talked about. So enough yapping for me, let's get into the details up close on the pistol. As you can see here, we have a few different Berettas laid out for you. We have the 92X with the LTT treatment. This is a standard uh, Inox, some people pronounce it differently, 92 series, and then this is a Vertec Inox. So uh, like I was saying earlier, the frame on this particular gun is the frame from this gun with one exception. Um, but one thing a lot of people really like about the Vertex frames versus the traditional M9 frames is the size difference. So it has a slightly different grip angle, as you can see, and it also doesn't have this hump here. Um, so a lot of folks with smaller hands have a much easier time reaching the trigger on the Vertec frame. Additionally, that more vertical grip angle, a lot of folks like that, just sort of 1911-ish. So um, there is that. It's not as fat either, so it's a little bit slimmer. Now, this particular gun here has slim G10 grips on it, but even still, just kind of look at my hands there where they sit on this gun uh, versus this gun, my fingers are coming much further back there. There's less of a gap. Now I have large hands. So for me personally, I actually put the grip insert on the 92X that mimics this size grip. However, it comes from the factory with these two right here, which are gonna give you the vertex style grip angle. So it's modular in that regard. You can set it up how you want. I just happen to be a fan of this style. Getting specifically into this particular gun, it does come, like I said, with those three 18 round NP3 coated magazines from Langdon Tactical if you select the NP3 version. Now the grip texture on this gun is fantastic. It's one of the things I really, really like about the 92X series. Um, like I said, I have the wrap around here to make it a little bit larger, but this thing is definitely very aggressive. Now, what, like I always say, whenever I'm talking about aggressive grips, in my opinion, it's better to start out with an aggressive grip and then you can sand it down if you want to, take a little bit of that edge off. Um, but I really like the aggressive grips. I have zero issues with it. It sticks in my hand, which I really love. And uh, even here when it's been, you know, triple digits out there on the range, 100% humidity. This gun just sticks in my hand, which is exactly what I want. So I am definitely a fan of that. The same is true if you go with the ones that come with it. Additionally, a factor that makes that the case is that it actually has checkering here on the front, both vertical and horizontal. As we all know, Beretta, for whatever reason, likes to just do vertical, which is the dumbest type of checkering that you can do. However, they got smart on the 92X model, so good on them for that. The Magwell does have a little bit of a bevel to it as well, which is good. 
or magazine release there is extended. And of course the factory one is gonna be black, but it's a little bit of an extension on there. Makes it a little bit easier than some of the smaller ones that you guys are used to if you're used to shooting the old 92 FS or M9s. And then if you go with the NP3 version on Langdon's site, they go with the Elite 2 hammer on there. So it's, they actually change that hammer out there and give you the Elite 2, which certainly is a nice upgrade aesthetically in my opinion. Some of the regular 92Xs from Beretta will give you the option for a F model, which is gonna be a decocker and safety, somewhat like we have here on this particular gun where you can accidentally decock it when you're uh, running the slide or something like that. Um, but this is the G model only, has the G conversion done to it from the factory from Langdon, which certainly is nice. So what I mean by that is, if you are in single action and you go to decock it, putting it into double action, at this point, uh, decocker will automatically spring right back up putting you back in double action now i think that's just a much better option from a practical safety standpoint as well as just a situational awareness kind of thing uh, that is one of the drawbacks of the m992 system is that if you're going to run the slide you can accidentally put that decocker or the safety on when you don't want it to be on and then you go to pull it and you get a dead trigger. So that eliminates the possibility of it, which I definitely dig. Of course, it's ambidextrous as well, which is certainly is nice. Um, you guys can see everything is NP3'd, like I mentioned earlier. So if you're going to run that trigger, you guys can see our uh, firing pin safety there goes out of the way, comes up there with that nice NP3 finish on there. We have our slide lock and slide release, which are nice. Um, definitely no issues in terms of false slide lock or anything like that. It's definitely easy to come up and hit and uh, drop your slide that way should you choose to do so. We have our takedown lever here. Trigger, of course, which has been NP3 coated and has that Langdon tactical trigger job to it. So it's very good in my opinion. Uh, in double action, you guys can see it's almost got no staginess to it at all. Um, and then the reset is nice and short as you just heard, right there. And the take up in single action is just fantastic. Um, Ernest Langdon and the folks at LTT, they, did, they know what they're doing with trigger jobs and they're just fantastic. And compared to something like this, this gun has a, um, a D spring in it. So it's a little bit lighter, but you guys can see all of the different staginess that goes into it. And then the reset all the way out there and all this slop right here. And again, this one has the deep spring in it already. So this one's even better than it would be from the factory, but still, it's still way stagier. And the reset totally different than we have here with this gun. It's just, it's absolutely improved in every way. Some folks say they have a hard time with these guns hitting in double action. In my opinion, I don't see any real degradation double action with the LTT trigger job on there. It's absolutely smooth. You just roll right into it, get those first round hits on target, which certainly is nice. Um, continuing on with the trigger guard, it has the rounded one which the 92 X's all have from the factory as opposed to our squared off quote unquote combat trigger that you'd see on earlier versions. Then we have the 1913 rail out front. So attaching any of your lights, lasers, anything like that, super easy to do. And uh, continuing on up to the slide, you guys will see one of the big differences here. Like I mentioned earlier, a M9A3 inspired slide is what Beretta calls it, meaning that everything's interchangeable with M9A3 parts wise. So for the sights, they went with a serrated uh, square notch rear and then a high contrast. They call it orange to me. It kind of looks red, but I'll leave that up to you guys. Uh, front sight on there. It's way better in my opinion. And the thing that's nice about it is unlike the older M9s that we have here, uh, or 92 series, uh, it's actually interchangeable. So if you wanted to get some aftermarket sights for it, easily you can just throw them on there. It's a dovetail sight, super easy to do with a punch and you're in business. Disassembling the pistol is pretty simple, but for folks who are unfamiliar with the gun, what you're gonna to wanna to do is lock our slide to the rear, push up here on the slide lock, and at this point, verify that we are clear, and we are. We're gonna push this button right here, which again has been NP3 coded, and you're gonna push that, relieving tension on our takedown lever, rotate the takedown lever 90 degrees. At this point, just release your slide. You don't have to pull the trigger. That's one thing I know a lot of folks do like. We do have a steel guide rod. This one, of course, has been NP3 coded, and then we're gonna pull our barrel out, 
Of course, we have the NP3 coating on all of the parts where it can be, which is nice. And the barrel itself is chrome lined. It has that nice a wide feed mouth to it, so that way you can feed any type of hollow points or anything like that. It also has the target crowning out there on the front. Uh, 92Xs, some of them are offered with threaded barrels for folks that are interested in that kind of thing. And as you can see here on the inside, everything's NP3 where it can be. Same will be true here for our frame, they do a complete tear down of the gun over there at Langdon Tactical and do all that NP3 finishing on there. Everything, everything, all the little pieces in there you guys can see have that NP3 finish on there. At this point in the video, I think we walked through all the important points of this gun as it pertains to what Langdon Tactical does, as well as the differences with the 92X series. Um, however, a few things just to discuss in general about the gun is that it's not lightweight. Um, any type of 92 or M9 series gun is not gonna be super lightweight. It's not gonna compete with your Glock 19 weight-wise. However, in terms of smoothness, recoil impulse, accuracy, all of those things. It's gonna compete quite well with just about any polymer gun out there. Um, I do like the standardized 1913 rail. I do think that's an improvement over some of the stuff we've had in the past from Beretta. Of course, if you wanna run accessories, which most folks do these days, a light laser, whatever, it's a good option. Uh, Langdon Tactical also offers the ability to mount red dots on most of the 92 series guns. Check their website out for the details or my video on that. Um, so they do offer that capability too, if you would like that option. So it's kind of taken the gun into the modern era. And I think a lot of folks don't like the M9 grip. I'm one of the freaks that does. I'm a big fan of it. And I like the additional grippiness of this as well. Now, in terms of price point, the actual 92X from Beretta is going to come in at $800 to $900, depending on the model and where you look. And the one with the upgraded trigger job, at least as of right now, from Beretta is coming in at $845. So buying from them, you essentially just get an upgraded trigger. I don't know why you wouldn't do that um, if that's something you're looking at. Um, I think they actually only offer the full size and the Centurion. And I think I said compact earlier. As far as I know, they don't. I think I messed up on that one. But regardless, if you're looking for one of those two guns, I'd get it from them with a better trigger makes sense. There's no reason not to. Um, and then if you want to go full NP3 with the new hammer and all of that sort of stuff, it's going to be a little bit more than that. It's just, I think, over $1,100 as of right now. So it's not inexpensive, that's for sure. However, it is a super high quality gun, in my opinion. Beretta uh, M9s, 92s, at least in modern times, are just super proven, rugged, durable, reliable guns. They just run, and like I said, in terms of accuracy, they're fantastic. This particular gun with HSTs, I was able to repeatedly, me behind it, get two inch groups at 25 yards, and that's as good as I can shoot a pistol. I can't shoot a pistol better than that, so the gun may actually be more accurate than that. I just don't have, you know, that type of better marksmanship than that. So accuracy is on point for sure. The trigger definitely aids in that, as does the better sights. Um, so there is that. Reliability has been 100%. I actually have had this gun in uh, since before the pandemic. So I actually put a good bit of rounds through it. It's got like 1,400-ish, 1,300-ish rounds through it. Zero malfunctions of any kind with anything we've put through it. Of course, the majority has been Minuteman munitions, which we thank them for sponsoring the channel uh, definitely helps, especially in these times. And I should also point out that in terms of relationships, this gun was sent out by the folks over at Langdon Tactical for this video. So there is that. I think we answered pretty much all of the questions that might come up in the comments section. Oh yeah, holsters. I know you guys always ask about that. So throughout this video, we've probably used two different holsters. Uh, one of them is going to be the crossbreed outside the waistband that I use for a lot of my Beretta uh, videos and Beretta shooting. Uh, so there'll be a link down below for that. And then the other one that I'm sure you'll talk about is with the Streamlight TLR on there, we're using the uh, Omnivore holster, which is a retention holster. Works with any gun, not any gun, 99% of guns with a Streamlight TLR mounted on there. And that way you get good holster compatibility and it also gives you a retention option, which certainly is nice. Um, with that, I think we covered everything that could come up in the comments section if you actually watch the entire video. Um, but regardless, if you have questions that we didn't answer, you can always post them down there. But the best place to reach me with those questions is over at my Facebook page. As always, I do get back to everybody over there. Sometimes it takes me a little bit because there's literally hundreds of thousands of you <laughs> watching these videos and only one of me. Um, but I do see the messages there, whereas comments on YouTube or elsewhere that I post videos, I don't always see them. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you're not subscribed, which the majority of you watching this video are not subscribed, according to my analytics, about 70% of you are not. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you like the video, and I look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.